Well, today's project, first thing on the list, my parts came in for my power steering pump hoses, and they need to be changed. As you can see, the little baby setting till the parts came in. I just used a little duct tape and a rag to kind of slow the old juice down so I could use it minimal. So that's our first project. We're going to get at this changing them hoses. I don't know if I can get to be able to show you all this, but I will give it a try. <laughs> I wasn't going to initially film this, but I just thought I'm going to give you a little footage of my wood pile that fell over. As you can see, I got most of it done. What I did. I rebuilt it. I had the all these base pieces. So this time in rebuilding this, I used these treated 4x4 four four planks at the very base. Leveled it out so it has more of a lean towards the building itself. So as the weight of this will keep it pushed against the uh, building which is my goal that I'm after so getting down to the tail end here I just thought I'd give you a little bit of footage of how to stack up or how I stack them at least so if you notice I tend to stagger them so they interlock you take that one, for example, this is the downside of the V, so I would put it so that it interlocks with that. And then I take a look at the next piece. I see I can put it that way to interlock and drop into that hole. And I do that with each, each piece I get. I check the piece over and determine the place where it is. This is a heavier one, so it can go towards the base. So we're going to put it there, not on your finger, of course, which I just did. And then this one, you see how nice that fit in there. Now we just keep going until we get it all done. There's a small there. Now this, this one here has a hump in it, so I take a little skinny piece like this. And we use that for what I call fill-ins. You size it up which way it fits the best. And we see that it fits that way the best. We have a pile of dirt on this. This initially was base piece. So what we're going to do here, we're going to get most of the dirt off.
hurt, we can all put a little one in there, which happens to have a little one right here. And that fits perfect. There of the building itself. So we're kind of using that as my guideline. And when it comes to the top row, I look for pieces that fell in to go underneath that lip. So, that's generally how we go. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a break here, because that's hard work on me. i fill this side, and then i got that short little pile there. It's not too bad yet, but I'm going to tackle it just the same while I'm at it. I have the two boards sitting there to lay down and start it all with. This is what I got left remaining to go in there. A little update on the boat. Well, I opened a little bit up and show you what all is happening. And explain that. That's the pile from that corner there where the old engine mount, rear mount goes. There's the shape of the starboard side. When I was cutting this open here, it was all saturated. So I decided, well, well, let's open a little bit up and do a little inspection. There's the piece I cut out. And this was just saturated with water. Well, so I've decided it's not too bad once you get farther in here. So I'm just going to, I've decided, I was looking at prices of other boats, they're more than I can afford. So I've decided to go ahead, do a little rebuilding of this boat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this floor straight across here, down along the side, replace the new plank here, put Put all new wood in here, and in here, the, this is where the front engine mount is gone, and that, there's a board under there. I'm going to put a 4x4 four four treated one in there. I'm also going to put treated ones here and there. New layer of fiberglass on top, and We'll go from there. It won't take much to do your kicker there. Just replace the uh, two new boards there. And reinforce it on this side here. I'm going to put some metal strips in to reinforce it, making it stronger and better. So that's the update to the old boat. Okay, well I just finished spraying the old easy off. I'm going to pressure wash all this before I begin disassembling. As you can see, I removed the rag to show you how I just used a little bit of duct tape there to wrap around to get me home. As soon as I got home, went online, good old Rock Auto and ordered me some new hoses. So, 
and give that about 10 minutes but it's real easy off to take action for any oil we're going to pressure wash it then so I dug me old pressure washer here and got it all set up ready to go well it looks like this might just work Let's When you're by yourself, it takes longer when you set up, have to set your camera up yourself. This is where it sure would be nice to have a camera person. Okay, well it's been about 10 minutes since there, so... Fire the old pressure washer up. film the bottom end but I want to get it washed down too Done. We're going to let it dry. This section here that has different nozzles that you can put in while the inside was broken. So I took and I put glue on the piece that was broken drilled a couple holes here, put some screws in it so I could interlock my pieces. 
So that is the reason I got this so cheap. I'm not going to say exactly how much I got, but got it for. But I'll tell you this much. It was under the 30 mark. Okay, first thing we're going to do. One thing I learned. After about 1971, when the mission controls first came out, everything was slapped on the outside of the engine block, and all kinds of junk came in the road. So to get at what you want to get at, you want to make remove certain items so you can get at what you want to get at. In this case, this is in the road. So we're going to remove it so it's out of the road. And this just simply pops in. Of course, one would be metric and one would be standard. That was another item. When Canada went to the meter system, The three North American manufacturers had no choice but to switch to metric. Let me tell you a little something about that. It used to drive me bananas. I started my apprenticeship on Toyotas with Northern Toyota. That was all through metric. Same with BMW, Renault, and other jobs I had, all metric. Then when I got to working at the GM dealer in Edmonton, I discovered something very interesting. And here's a good example right here. These two are the, pretty much the same tread size but one is metric head and the other is standard head. Also, with the threads of the bolts, they started with the first year, it was almost two years, they started out by Okay, we have to change to from 3 8 to 10 millimeter for the head. When they first started, when you put a 10 millimeter wrench on it, it was sloppy. Since then, they've improved it now and they made it exactly the same as the European size. So as you can see, now, being an eight, this being an 87, it's a true 10 millimeter, like all European vehicles were, and, and Japanese vehicles. That's just a little history for you. Okay, so we got that out of the road. Now we're gonna cut these wires out of the road as well. This is one thing I've always cursed at. Whatever engineer designed this power steering pump, 
it was fine in the old carburetor systems that did not have this air filter box here for the old power steering. But with this put in, why in the devil did they have to leave this reservoir below this air scoop? Never did make sense to me. Of course, that's one of the sayings what Ford used to always have. Oh yeah, Ford's got a better idea. Well, like my, one of my bosses I work with, and uh, Ford rep used to be coming all the time, and I always been saying, yeah, Ford's better idea, Ford's better idea. Well, my boss turned around and said, yeah, Ford's always got a better idea, but when the F are they going to use it? <laughs> I never said a word after that. <laughs> Yeah, it was just a memory I won't forget. Okay, I see they've got a clip between the two, so I'm going to have to separate that clip. Oh, uh, that shouldn't be a problem to get a pair of pliers here. Oh, well, it's nice and cool in the garage here. Wish it would be that way when the evening comes. No, for some reason, I can't figure to understand this. Why is it a building that's so cool, a wooden building, so cool during the day, but in the evening when the sun starts going down, then the building heats up itself. Never could understand that. Well, during the day, nice and cool. Okay. So I'll start to see if I can somehow. Yeah, that's what that read. I'm going to wrap tie these two harnesses together so it'll open up more room in there. I might as well do that right now and then I won't be having to fight with this. Okay. Help me a Oh, that's a lot more neater and better. Okay. Well, that's what brought the flyers for that. Let's do a little clip. Let's see if we can get the clip off, or are they attached to both, is the question to be seen. It feels like they're both attached together as a unit. Okay. Well, that's not a problem. Get our line wrench. Okay. 
Okay, this is my high side, high pressure. Should be the big one. Let me just figure a way of getting in there. Hey, sure don't give you much room. Looks like it's nice and open. But when it comes right down to it, that's another story. Okay, it must gotta be this one. Well look at that, eh? Go figure. Got a spot. Now if I could get it cracked. Oh boy. You know these manufacturers I don't that they just slap things together. They never think about the mechanic or the person that's gotta work on it. Oh, if it looks good, yeah, we'll do it that way. Oh, if it's gonna work that way, yeah, let's do it that way. The hell with the mechanics. More than once, when I was in the trade, we wrote letters to the manufacturers complaining about the ways they did things. I don't see that happening anymore. And the newer the vehicle is, the worse it is. I'm glad I hung up my toolbox when I hung, hung it up. I was just before the year of this car, back in the 80s, year I met, the exact year I met my wife, back in Edmonton, was the year I hung up my toolbox. 1982. At least this is still in the 80s, which allows me to be able to work on it. Don't even try give me a new vehicle to work on that's in this century. Because I will not work on new vehicles of today. So I gotta figure out how to make me an arm here that can give me a little leverage. find a spot or something because I do not have the strength to get in there to give this old thing a crack so we got a device as I was saying earlier on okay that's not going to work but it might have cracked free being metric and standard some sizes are a match. I'll give you a quick rundown on that. 7 sixteenths is exactly the same as 11 millimeter. 13 millimeter is exactly the same as half inch. 14 and 9 sixteenths. The 14 is a little tight fit on some 9 sixteenths heads, but they do work. They do fit. Uh, 11 sixteenths is the same as 17 millimeter. And 3 quarter inch is the same as 19 millimeter. From there on, there's an in between. Like your 5 eighths wrench, sometimes you can get away with using a 15 and other times a 16. So there's no real in between. Because there's a big difference between 1 16th of an inch versus 1 millimeter. Uh, then I'm trying to figure. I think it's the old best bet is get the old vice grips 
out or just get the old hacksaw off, cut the line, get a deep socket on it. Probably would be the best bet. What about the actual power steering pump? I thought I had me a set of, uh, okay, see there's a good example right there. That was a 5 8 line wrench, which would be equivalent to your 15 millimeter. I don't know how much juice is in, in here left. Thank goodness this was the pressure size. I did order both holes at the same time. But only more open the box and discovered it was only the one hose. Thank goodness it was the right one, the pressure hose. Okay. Hmm. So I'm going to go have another look in my toolbox. I'm running out of toolboxes. That's the difference between 15 millimeter and 5 8 which is why my 5 8 wrench would have that little slit, because we had about half a millimeter difference. So let's see if we can get this crack free now that I found the 15 millimeter wrench. As you can see, manifolds in the direction one way there, power steering pumps in the way the other direction. Well, too bad the wrench wouldn't be designed like this, so that one could go like that down in there. This will all lead and I put my car on the uh, racks here, because when I have a back condition, it's too much to bend over for me. And you can see, I can't even get that 15 millimeter wrench on there. Okay. We got to come up with a plan. I have to think. I think I'm just going to get the old. Hacksaw out or grinder out and just cut that line off and then use a socket your ratchet to break it free. And probably that's my best option. that okay great now we're gonna take that a straight angle so I can use an old socket now onto it. Now we're just going to take and
Okay, we get that off. Now we're going to go get my impact in our 15 millimeter socket. Some of the fun you can have with older stuff. It's a tight fit. Okay, we'll get the wobble joint out. Give this another try. sucked. Okay, exactly what I was talking about more earlier on. 15 millimeter socket and it wouldn't quite fit on supposed to be 15 millimeter being an 87 there's my 5.8 socket for spark plugs I got two of them so I designed one for normal use and one for spark plugs only and there we have it that's what we were after okay I can see that so well welded in there would have never succeeded with a wrench. Oh yeah, and now she finally broke free. 
but that would have been very, very difficult with a wrench. Okay, so now we're ready to put the new hose in. Oh, where's my rag? Okay. Rag here. And I see they even supplied new O-rings, which is great. So I don't have to dive into my O-ring box. They've provided it with me. Okay. Which way is going to be the easiest? bent that line just a bit out of the way it feels like it doesn't want to line up 100% so this little bar here we need a spot and we're going to bring that line a bit that way now well, maybe we should be able to get this one in and start it. Mm, okay, we just go down with that one. You end up even doing how to do a little customizing once in a while and getting your new parts in. You always want to start these with your fingers so that you know you got it lined up. It doesn't help when it fits. You got a different kind of pressure fighting me. You look straight. Well, we got that started. size okay that's nice mm, better off to go get a wrench and forget about the Oh, yeah. 
looking good. Okay, I'm not going to tighten it till I get my exact spot when this end gets in. Right there. Okay, more customization required. Bar's too long. This is the longest wrench I got out here. I'm gonna go down with this pipe here. This out of the way. Come on, you're so close. Yeah, I heard that drop. That's feeling better. Just enough clearance. Okay, looking good. I'm going to get my five inch wrench here and we can get our final tightening here. Oh, this is a smaller one. This is a 916th on the bottom.
<laughs> Feels tight. Yep. Look, more tight on that one. <clears throat> okay. We'll fill up the juice. And we should have it. New high pressure hose in. Woo! Is that a minute or two? I did initially order the other line here, which is our intake from the feed to it, but it didn't come. I don't know that one's leaking a little bit on the bottom. I just discovered that when I was washing it down. Anyhow, my ma major one that was giving me the major problem is done. Let's fire it up and see if we make sure it's working. So bring on the thunder. Some air bubbles are starting to come, that's good. Don't want to turn the wheels too much here being on the ramp. And it looks like it brought it right down to level. To where it should be. Well, that's great. Okay, where I put my cap? Right there. And there's our two though. There's our full hot mark in the, that section there, so I go like this. I put it there and our mark fell to be about right there. So I hold my finger and that's where we go from. That way it allows you any expansion to take place with when it heats up. in the mark. And there we have Successfully installed. 
That's my storage place that I keep one meter always in there. I'll wipe off my little felt. Okay, put our snorkel back in as you can see modifying that wiring harness it's gonna make it much better for that Okay, put all my tools away. I won't block out. Oh, it's a live socket yet. Gotta kill it. Sometimes I wish to have three hands. But I think all of us do the wish that once in a while. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. Till next time, adios.